I've heard of something called barley straw. What is it and what does it actually work? This is always sort of thought to be a bit of an old wives' tale, really. This idea that, oh, if you put barley straw into a, into a pond or a lake, it stops the algae leak. And I think a lot of people think, oh, yeah, it's just not, not going to work. It's going to be a, you know, a bit of a snake oil thing. It does have an effect. It, it really does have an effect. And it's used on large lakes. It's used by um, some water authorities on reservoirs that are holding drinking water, where we want to keep blooms of algae at bay, especially blooms of blue-green algae which can be very toxic. Quite a few fisheries will use barley straw as a way of keeping algae at bay as well. But the way it has to be used is quite specific. We can't just get a bale of straw and chuck it into the lake and forget about it. Um, well, we really, you know, with a, with a, if we're going to use it in a garden pond, we can't just get a handful of straw, chuck it into the pond and think, well, that's done. The way we do apply barley straw to a large lake, we're looking at about sort of half a tonne of straw per hectare of lake. So that's a lot of straw going into a large lake. But rather than, again, just chucking the bale in, what, what we do on, on fisheries is get that straw and make sort of big fat sausages of barley straw, pa passing that barley straw through a Christmas tree wrapping machine. Make a big barrage of that straw up at, you know, the, up at the sort of either at the inlet for a lake or at the sort of end where the prevailing wind is going to blow down from the barley straw. And that barley straw then needs to be anchored up at the surface. So it's got the sunlight acting on. And when it's applied properly, there can be a really marked effect in reduction in, in algae growth. But we need to keep that barley straw in the lake all year round. In fact, we need to be replacing that barley straw every six months. So if we then try and scale that technology or that, that concept down to a garden pond, then yes, we're going to need, you know, a, obviously a much smaller amount of barley straw. I suppose you would be thinking, you know, sort of good three or four handfuls for a, I don't know, a, a, a average sized garden pond but it's going to then need to be held in a, in a sort of mesh bag of some sort and, and anchored right up at the surface of the pond near the um near the, the near a waterfall or a fountain or something like that and then we're going to need to keep changing that barley straw every um, every six months or so the point is if you've got a pond that's choked with algae it's a bit too late we want to right. be put in the preventative stuff in at the beginning so that prevention is an ultraviolet clarifier. It's monthly dosing with uh, um, approved algae side like algafin, using the barley straw as well, but also then thinking how can I be taking these nutrients away? How can I be limiting the amount of nutrients available to the algae? So if I've got too many fish, if I'm feeding the fish too much, then that's going to lead to more nutrients ultimately. So reflecting on stocking densities and feed rates, um, but also then thinking well what else uses nutrients in the pond plants do. Lilies will. Marginal plants like the reeds and the irises and the water mint and the uh, mimulus and watercress and all these lovely marginal plants, they grow really vigorously in the summer. They have their roots in the water, so they're taking the nutrient out of the water, but their leaves, their foliage is in the air. So they're not impacting the water chemistry by their excessive growth and photosynthesis, but they are taking nutrients out of the water. So they're depriving the algae. So these higher pond plants are just essential um, to in, in the fight against algae. So and I guess that there's a there's a lot that you're talking about there, and some people might think, goodness me, that's complicated. There's so many different elements, but it's a lot easier than removing the sun from the sky. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> it's the it's our only other option, I guess. Well, there is there is shading. I mean, if you if we've got a pond and we can build a pergola over a pond, that cutting that shade down can have an effect. And even yeah. on some large lakes, I think this is used a bit on golf courses, there's even a sort of blue dye that you can add to the water that turns the water a sort of subtle blue shade, um, quite a pretty blue shade, um, which is alleged, I'm sceptical, but alleged to um, cut down, you know, cut filter out that wavelength of light that the algae needs to photosynthesize. 